Let's go! Today guys, we're doing something very interesting. We are going to look at the top altcoins in which you are holding right now. So this is your top altcoins. I did post on Twitter uh, yesterday. Drop your portfolio below if you want feedback on one of my videos. So this is what we are going to do today, guys. And this is what this channel is going to be focused on as well. We're going to do some fun stuff on this channel. And today we are going to look at your top altcoins. So, of course, I did get hundreds of comments on this tweet yesterday. I believe I did. Yes, 473. Of course, I cannot go through all of these portfolios. So what I have done is I've picked a couple of kind of standard portfolio so one standard portfolio for the people who want to play it safe the regular portfolio for someone who is uh, wanting to go deep into DeFi, deep into other types of projects nfts and so the portfolios i have picked is going to represent that kind of investing mentality so yes with that said i'm just going to go ahead and give you my opinion on uh, these altcoins first off if you are not yet subscribed to satoshi stacked we are going to do a lot of fun stuff on this channel as i said make sure to subscribe right now activate the bell as well so let's look at portfolio number one so this one was posted by vtech and he has atom 28 percent so deep into atom ada 17 percent almost 18 dot kusama and solana so so what we can see with my friend vtech here is that he's going heavy into first layer protocol so atom cardano dot kusama and solana they are all first layer protocols meaning that you're able to build on top of the protocol so he's not into ethereum so he's excluding the uh, biggest base layer protocol ethereum instead going into coins he believes has more opportunity so that is how i am interpreting this portfolio and also the biggest bag is atom and if we look at atom I mean, this is one of the base layer protocols which has not really seen that much love recently. I mean, it hasn't really, it has been going sideways pretty much for almost a month right now, while Cardano has been having a surge, while Polkadot has been having surges. And that is perhaps the reason why he is deep into Atom, because Atom really has not had that big of a surge yet. I mean, up 55% uh, during the last 30 days, of course, it has done tremendously well. But if you look at something like Cardano, which is up 108% during the last 30 days and 2000% during the last year, whereas Cosmos is only up 424. Also, of course, lower market cap. So second biggest bag is Cardano, seeing a lot of uh, potential in Cardano, perhaps with the Gogan mainnet being released, betting on the smart contract functionality to absorb some value from Ethereum. And that is pretty much the general thesis, I believe here. He is expecting these coins to absorb a lot of money from Ethereum, and thus he does not have Ethereum in the top five of the portfolios. Polkadot, same as with Cardano, taking value out of Ethereum, of course, uh, Kusama and Solana. And Solana is one of those coins which I believe actually is still pretty undervalued. So Solana is, I mean, it's up 96% during the last 30 days. But market cap of $3.5 billion, even smaller than Cosmos right here, which has a market cap of 4.5. And Solana is backed by um, Alameda Research, which is one of the most influential players right now in crypto. So you should not shrug off Solana. If you want to see more about these projects, then you can find them over on Satoshi Stacked. You got uh, Cosmos right here. You got Polkadot, several videos on Polkadot. And Solana, you got that video on the main channel. But now let's move on. Danny has 50% in Ethereum, 15 in ADA, DOT 15%, Engine 10%, and Link 10%. So again, going deep into base layer protocols, but this time having a more safe position in Ethereum and safe in regards to it is the second biggest crypto project, safe in the sense that it is together with Bitcoin, the only coin which has been officially classified as not a security by the uh, SEC. Also safe in the way that it has so much value locked into the ecosystem and so forth so on. Then you got Cardano, DOT and Engine, so base layer protocols for DeFi on ADA and DOT and then some NFT exposure on Engine. I like 
engine, 10% on engine. As you know, we did post a video. Well, this was one month ago, and then we did one like two weeks ago, I believe on Satoshi Stacker. And since the initial video right here one month ago, this is up, I don't know how many hundred percent in that, since that video. So who knows, perhaps our friend Danny Heidecker got some inspiration from that video. And then 10% in Chainlink. So a little bit more DeFi exposure right there. We're quickly moving on. So the next portfolio here is from Failing Forward, having 54% in Ethereum, 41% in Bitcoin. So basically the majority of the portfolio is in Ethereum and in Bitcoin. So again, these two coins, the only one which are not classified as securities by the SEC. And then he got Loopring, he got Stellar, SNX, nice, SNX, XRP Link, and a little bit of USDT here actually. So not deep into altcoins overall, deep into Ethereum and Bitcoin, but still having a very small allocation here on these altcoins. As you know, guys, in general, I mean, there's a reason why he's deep into Ethereum and Bitcoin, because as we know, all altcoins so far throughout history, we have this black on white. All altcoins trend towards zero when compared to Bitcoin. And failing forward here, I think that the thesis he is having right now is that Ethereum is now in the same bucket as Bitcoin when it comes to uh, this type of, met of uh, price action. So Ethereum is not going to go to zero against Bitcoin because it has been around for so long and this is what he's betting on. So deep into Ethereum, deep into Bitcoin and then a couple of moon bags just in case they were to shoot up to the sky. And also pay attention to the coins he have been picking. So XLM, another base layer protocol with a lot of potential. So XLM are actually working with a lot of countries working with central bank digital currencies. So if they are able to tap into traditional finance and absorb some of that money, even this small of a percentage could mean a lot in the future. Synthetics, derivatives is the biggest market in the world. So even with a small percentage in SNX, if they are able to absorb just a tiny bit of percentage of the global derivatives market, SNX is going to go to the moon. And then XRP, you know, working with banks, if they are able to absorb some of that money, which is stuck in Nostro Vostro accounts, of course, XRP can still have a huge potential moving forward. Although I don't personally believe in XRP, but anyway, this is the thesis he is having. This is the way he is thinking, I believe at least. Not too bad, but now let's quickly move on. Again, Adam 25%, ADA, and then BNB. So Binance are going to do everything they can. Remember when I said that Bitcoin and Ethereum is the only two coins not classified as a security? Well, BNB is actually in on thin ice. I mean, one thing that can actually destroy Binance is if BNB is classified as a security, which it may or may not be in the future, they're going to do everything they can to increase the utility of BNB and make sure it is not classified as a security. And then you got eGold, DOT, Solana, and Bitcoin. Cool. Here we have another safe portfolio with 62% in Bitcoin, 18 in Ethereum. So these two together actually make up, what is that, 80% then Cardano, and then a couple of smaller projects. I mean, Bondly, Frontier, Mana, and Reef. So if they are able to actually go up in market cap a lot, even these tiny percentages are going to mean a lot in the future. But overall, safe portfolio, and then a couple of moonshots with these coins. Moving on to the next portfolio, which is uh, from Cruelty Freaks. And uh, so 68% in Bitcoin, Ethereum 10%, the graph, Aave, Maker, Uniswap, Algorand, Chainlink, Ren, and Yuma. And straight away, what I can see right here is that he or, or she actually, she is going deep into decentralization basically because there's a lot of projects which uh, say that they are aiming to be decentralized and so on. But I mean, you can raise questions about that. But these projects, Yuma, Synthetics, okay, decentralized synthetics, Ren, obviously Ren BTC and other synthetics, um, working with decentralized station, working with uh, synthetic assets, Algorand, base layer protocol, very decentralized in the way that they are trying to make their business. Uniswap, of course, decentralized finance, Maker, decentralization, decentralized stablecoin with DAI, Aave, Money Market, The Graph, and of course, Ethereum and Bitcoin. So if you really want to push decentralization and you believe in decentralization, this is how your portfolio would uh, would look like with uh, a couple of these coins at least. And then we have Halabang with 55% Ethereum, 30% Bitcoin, 15% in USDC. So always keeping 15% in USDC and actually having a strategy right here. So the Ethereum bag, if it is going to, sorry, 
Ethereum bag to fill. Okay, so the Ethereum bag is 55%, but if altcoins go down, they are going to be deployed into altcoins. Bitcoin is for the HODL stack. Again, as I said, Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency not trending towards zero when compared to Bitcoin. Okay, so Bitcoin outperforms every cryptocurrency in history so far. This is what the data is telling us. USDC to buy the dip, mainly Ethereum because of its fluidity. So if the market is bad, in stable coins and wrapped Bitcoin. If the market goes sideways, yield farming and staking. If the market is going up, then deep into altcoins. Less risk exposure and most flexibility. Cool. So what do you think of this video today? Do you enjoy this kind of video? And also, what do you think of these coins we've been talking about? Let me know down in the comment section. And yeah, let me know if you want to see more of these videos. I will see you in the next video.